Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Daily Bullet, the Second Amendment Foundation's daily video series where we introduce you and talk with people that are making a difference in the Second Amendment arena. Joining us today, Dr. John Dean, a good friend of mine and the Director of Outreach for Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership. Dr. Dean, thanks for joining us today. Hey, it's my pleasure. Happy to be with you guys. So let's get started for somebody who may be just stumbling into this gun rights thing, maybe just finding this video. What is DRGO and, and how did it get started? Well, DRGO stands for Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership, and it was founded in 1994 by Dr. Timothy Wheeler. He's an ENT surgeon in California who has since retired. But back in those days, he realized that there was a significant bias against the Second Amendment amongst medical practitioners in California and, and frankly, across establishment medicine. So the AMA and the American College of Surgeons, maybe even American Academy of Pediatrics, American Psychiatric Association, all these big doctor groups were anti-2A. And... Uh, and then there was the issue with the uh, CDC doing bias research. They were doing advocacy research. So in 1996, uh, he and several other DRGO members and some other um, uh, folks that were in the 2A uh, field uh, testified in front of a, con a congressional committee and got the CDC defunded for doing bias advocacy research. Now, notice I didn't say gun violence research because that's never been defunded but what was defunded was the advocacy research in other words we want the, our research to turn out this way so let's fudge our numbers and do whatever tricks we have to do in order to make the conclusion come out what we want which is anti-second amendment and so by uh, by their own words they pretty much hung themselves up and so um, the uh, Dickey Amendment was passed and, and still in effect actually to this day. So in 1996, the Dick Dickey Amendment was passed. Uh, and uh, so the, the bias advocacy research has been defunded. And it still should be that way forever because it's, there's no place for government money in uh, bias advocacy research. So that's where DRGO got started. Okay. So started in the middle 90s and... It has, uh, well, to start with, uh, full disclosure, DRGO, what uh, I think it was six, seven years ago, became part of the Second Amendment Foundation, right? Yeah, it may not have been that long, but it was originally uh, part of the Claremont Institute. And then uh, later on, uh, the Second Amendment Foundation, uh, it became under their umbrella. It's kind of like what uh, you know, JPFO is like. Same same kind of thing. JPFO and DRGO, we're under that Second Amendment Foundation umbrella, but we're independent. I mean, they, they help us out with certain things, but really, we're we're an independent organization. They don't tell us what we have to write about and all that kind of stuff. And we can talk about what we write about. I think that's an important thing. So we have a website, DRGO.us, mm -hmm. um, and we also do a, a blog twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays a, a blog post comes out one of our writers and of course I've done some writing but there's a lot of other people who do writing we have people in all fields of medicine psychiatry and internal medicine surgery trauma uh, I'm an orthopedic surgeon I do children's orthopedics um, and my area of interest is uh, gun-free zones in hospitals because that's how I got started with this in about uh, probably 2013 or so um, I realized that every time I walked into a hospital, I had to disarm myself and that the, uh, the Texas uh, 30-06 signs did absolutely nothing to protect me or my patients or my colleagues from, say, a, you know, a spree shooter or mass public shooting or even terrorism. And, and I've written extensively about that. And you can find all that stuff on drgo.us. Um, but we, we talk about all kinds of other things. Uh, when the Hearing Protection Act was coming out, uh, you know, w w and it was in front of Congress, we actually published uh, a uh, white paper explaining why the uh, uh, suppressors are such a good th thing. 
and why they're actually better than anything else. And not it wasn't just regular doctors writing this. It was actually four ear, nose, and throat surgeons, two of which were called uh, neurootologists, which basically deal with sensory, sensory neural hearing loss. Yeah, let's say that three times fast. Sure. Um, yeah, so, so anyway, so these guys actually wrote, they, they talked about the, the actual from a scientific st- basis and then the you know uh, how suppressors actually decrease uh, not only from the shooter side but also anybody in the vicinity um, you know if you're wearing earmuffs like I'm wearing you know hearing protection right um, you know we, we have electronic hear mu- earring earmuffs and we have the, just the passive ones and they may drop the uh, the noise signature by 20 to 30. Uh, decibels Mm -hmm. but uh, you know a suppressor uh, catches everybody anybody who's in the area the suppressor will work for whereas uh, if you're not wearing hearing protection and uh, you know paul how many times have you uh you know shouldered a rifle and bumped your hearing protection off and next thing you know your ears are ringing i know i did an apple seed you know i was teaching an apple seed and that happened to me and i was deaf for a couple days in one ear in fact Mm -hmm. my hearing still is not right you know, you get permanent hearing loss. That's the other thing. If you get exposure above 120 decibels, uh, that causes permanent hearing loss. There's nothing you can do to recover that because it damages the little hair, hair cells. And so it's very important that we all protect our, our hearing. And so, so there's this paper that's there. Okay. We also talk about, you know, what do you do when your doctor asks you if you own a gun? There's a, there's a lot of good information about that. We talk about something called a, a boundary violation. If if they're pushing a political agenda, and it's not necessarily to your benefit, because if they tell you, oh yeah, you should either get rid of your guns or you know store them separately from the ammo and take them apart, and when somebody breaks into your house and you can't defend yourself, that's not in your best interest, is it? Right, but it's but not. the doctors are are telling people to do stuff like that, and they have no credentials, they have no education or training. They're just listening to what the you know American Academy of Pediatrics or the AMA tells them to do. But those guys aren't experts in in uh, self defense. When you look at public health, the public health people are way against you know firearms ownership and and firearms use, bec- but they don't take into account defensive uses by the normal person. They only look at the cost of, of uh, criminal activity and people being shot, murdered. You know, look at Chicago. Mm-hmm. You know, they look at that, but they don't look at the number of people who defend themselves every year. And you and I both know that number can be up to 2.5 million times a year. You know, and, and that, you know, they, they ignore that research. They only look at, they only look at, uh, the, the stuff that uh, that kind of reinforces their their preconceived notions. They only look at the cost. They don't look at the benefit. And yes. so these are the kind of things that DRGO has been fighting. And so we, when we see stuff that's put out in some of the uh, medical journals, we will debunk it. We will explain why it's bad. And that's that's what our blog does twice a week. We also have a Facebook page. Uh, and there's a lot of exchange on that as well. And we'll post articles from elsewhere, and then you know people will will comment. And so there's a lot of free exchange of ideas. One thing I want to get to, and this is something that's been going for a while, but I really want to highlight it because I I, I think it's something important that you that DRGO does. If you are in, let's it doesn't matter where you are. If you're looking for a physician and you don't want the question to come up do you have any guns or you don't want it to be an issue uh, if you are looking for an ear nose and throat doctor you don't want it to be an issue whether you own guns or not there is a way to match up people who are looking for second amendment friendly medical staff and those medical staff that are looking for patients can you talk about that for a little bit yeah, we have a, a, a website called 2adoc.com. It's the number two, the letter A, D-O-C as in doctor, dot com. And it's a matching service for patients and physicians to, so you can find a 2A-friendly 
provider for your whatever thing you're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still kind of in its infancy. It's been going on for a little over a year, I would say. And unfortunately, we have a lot more demand for, you know, of patients than we have doctors and other practitioners who have signed up. But, you know, the, the nice thing about it is it's not a searchable database. So if you are a healthcare provider and you want to sign up, it's basically it's a f referral service that doesn't cost you anything. And you get good quality patients. Look at all the people in the two-way community. They're good, good, good folks. And so... Um, so we really need people to sign up. It is not a searchable database, so the bad guys can't, uh, you know, can't look at it and say, "Oh, look, Doctor So and So, he's a two A guy. Let's go ahead and pick at his office because we don't like those people." You know, you don't want to be outed. In the same way, people who are looking for two A friendly doctors, um, they, they they can't be searched either. We match them up, and then we'll send you a, a, an email that says these are the doctors in this specific in the specific, uh, you know, say 25 miles or 50, whatever you request, uh, in this specialty, that's a two-way friendly doctor, and we try to match things up. But it's it's safe and it's free. That's the other thing. It doesn't cost anybody anything. It's a it's, a, um, it's kind of a pet project of our uh, director, uh, Doctor. I can't even pronounce his name because he's Polish, and it's P R Z E B I N D A. Mm -hmm. He pronounces it like Springa. <laughs> But uh, anyway, uh, but so he's the one that kind of uh, has honchoed that. Um, uh, I'm the membership director, so you know my, my job is membership. Uh, and so if you are a healthcare provider, or even if you're not one, we would ask you to go ahead and look at DRGO and join. Um, the, the cost is like $35 a year, and uh, there are some benefits to being in DRGO, although one of them just went away because uh, we just got an email from USCCA that says that they they're not honoring any of those relationships anymore, so uh, so that's one thing that we that that just went away. But um, it's a good organization and it's tax deductible too. So it's it's because we're an educational organization. Our job is really education. We're trying to to uh, educate people about the Second Amendment and the benefits of firearms ownership and safe use of firearms. Uh, versus what the uh, other side would tell you that you know everybody's out killing people with their guns and and you know assault weapons are there to to kill millions of people and that's just not true absolutely well we've only got a couple of minutes left of the time we have for today but briefly if you could um i want to touch back on gun free zones and i i've never yet seen a hospital that has hard entries I've never yet seen a hospital that has metal detectors and security at every entrance. If you go into a hospital that's a gun-free zone, you're really putting your trust in a piece of paper. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a magic talisman, right? It's, you know, you're thinking, it's magical thinking that you mm -hmm. think that, that that piece of paper or piece of plastic or cardboard at the front door of the hospital is going to protect you. And, and as I like to say, yeah, the gun free zone signs work right up until they don't you know and and the last thing that i want to do is i w i don't want to see my colleagues and my patients being slaughtered by some psychopath or by a bunch of terrorists and we know from looking at the, the history of terrorism against hospitals this is a real thing mm -hmm. not very much in the united states but around uh in the middle east especially Hospitals have become targeted, especially in uh, places like Afghanistan and in Syria. Um, of course, there have been hospitals targeted in Russia back in the mid-90s uh, during the uh, Chechen uh, revolts. They targeted a hospital in a place called Budinovsk and took over 1,000 people hostage. And they actually held Russia a hostage for about four days until they were able to actually get concessions from the Russian government, and then they were able to escape back to Chechnya. Surprise. They yeah. all made it back, you know. And, and so this is a real thing. Uh, there was a guy in the United States who the FBI fortunately got wind of who was going to bomb a hospital in Kansas, I think it was, this year. Oh. Um, but the FBI, but they, they had a, uh, he was trying to, to figure out how to make bombs, and the, the guy that he was talking to was an FBI informant. So he told the FBI... And the FBI confronted the guy, and they were in a shootout, and the guy committed suicide. 
So there was a, a hospital bombing that was going to happen in the United States this year. Fortunately, wow. it didn't happen. But, you know, so these are things that, that are out there. And nobody hears about it unless you really go looking for it. So this is why I think gun-free zones are, are, are a bad thing. You know, we need to be able to protect ourselves and we need to be able to protect the people that we are responsible for. And it's a moral issue as far as I'm concerned. As a physician, it's, it's, it's part of my job to take care of people, not only my patients, but their families and my colleagues and, and to be there, um, you know, to do what needs to be done. And the attorneys will tell the hospitals, oh, you're fine. All you need is that sign and you're covered. Well, guess what? Sooner or later when this happens, there's going to be a billion-dollar lawsuit against mm -hmm. the hospital corporation, and then they're going to change their tune. But until something like that happens, they're not going to open their you – know, they're not going to change their tune. I, I've been at this now for about seven years, and we've been running into that problem. It's the, it's the corporate mindset. Well, we are just about out of time. Before we go, though, if I could, one more time, let everybody know how they can find out more about DRGO and become a member. Sure. DRGO.us is our main website, and there you can find a lot of information, not just the membership stuff, but there's there's all of our old blogs, and plus there's a lot of uh, like white papers on s different subjects that may be of use to you. Uh, we touched on a couple, but there's a lot more than that. There's a there's a like an article on the history of, of the DRGO and how it got started. I think that's very interesting. Um, and then we have twowaydoc.com, which is the matching service. And we need both doctors, healthcare providers, and also patients. Uh, and it's free and it's not searchable, so it's safe. You're not gonna get uh, you're not going to get doxxed by the left. Let's put it that way. Very cool. Well, Dr. Dean, thank you so much for joining us today, man. I really appreciate it. My, my pleasure. Whew, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Folks, I want to ask you, if you would, please subscribe. And when you do, hit that notification bell so that you know when we put out another video, which we will be doing tomorrow. Stop back and check us then. Thanks again.